Right, okay, so today we're going to be looking at Tutorial 3. Now, let's just go through basically what Tutorial 3 had in it. Now, I went through some of this before, um, I'm sure you read through it, but we're going to do this anyway. So, it's the same exercise in Tutorial 2, but I'd like you to attempt vertical fragmentation and derived horizontal fragmentation. A multinational engineering company has decided to distribute, it, uh, distribute its project management information at the regional level in mainland Britain. Uh, the current centralised relational schema is as follows. Right, okay, so today we're going to be looking at Tutorial 3. Now, let's just go through basically what Tutorial 3 had in it. Now, I went through some of this before, um, I'm sure you read through it, but we're going to do this anyway. So, it's the same exercise in Tutorial 2, but I'd like you to attempt vertical fragmentation and derived horizontal fragmentation. A multinational engineering company has decided to distribute it uh, distribute its project management information at the regional level in mainland Britain. Uh, the current centralised relational schema is as follows. So uh, We're going to mostly have a look at employee today because you, know, you can have a look at those all you want um, but let's just let's just move on from there. Okay, now We've got all this stuff here, that's fine. But we know that employee contains employee details and the national insurance number is the main key because it's unique. And we know that, we remember last time we split up by region 1, 2 and 3, that's how we grouped things together. Uh, in terms of the departments I believe, that's what we, we separated up into, we separated up into departments. Um, I can remind us about that, uh, just to make sure, so if we have a look here, this is how we did this last time. So. What we did was use primary horizontal fragmentation for department with min term predicates. So D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6 based on the region, Scotland, Wales, England and in fact whether someone's a software engineer, mechanical engineer or an electrical engineer. Okay, so that's that's fine. So now what's next? Well, what I asked you guys to do was I wanted you to make a suitable fragmentation schema for the system in the case of primary horizontal fragmentation a minimal set of uh, predicates and the reconstruction of global relations from fragments. Now, and also to remind you that you have to state any assumptions necessary to support your design for the three scenarios below. So in, in this case, um, I would like you to, to do vertical fragmentation for employee first of all. So that's the first thing we're going to look at. The second part of this is just looking at videos, you know. Anyway, the first part, vertical fragmentation for employee. Well, why would I want to do that? Well, from reading the question, it says here, as well as distributing the data regionally, there is an additional requirement to access the employee data either by personal information, so that's for personnel, or by work-related information by payroll. So, well, let's have a look at employee. So, if I were, if I were personnel, then I want personal information, and if I were payroll, I want information about someone's pay. So, when I look here, I've got the national insurance number, um, first name, I name, whatever the hell that is. Uh, address, date of birth, sex, salary, tax code, and department number. Now, as it stands, the only thing I want for an HR perspective is national insurance number, because that's the unique key. We need to keep the primary key. If you remember by vertical fragmentation, we need to keep the primary key, which is common for rebuilding. Uh, the salary information and the tax code. And that is pretty much it, to be honest. That's pretty much it, I would say. There's nothing really else that um, I would want to take from that. If I were on pay, not payroll, sorry, if I were in personnel, I'd want obviously the key, the main key, the national insurance number. That's what makes them unique. There could be many people called John Smith, for example. Uh, and I would like to have the rest, the first name, the surname, address, date of birth, sex, and the department number. Okay, so we have two fragments, employee one and employee two. Uh, and that's how we're going to look at this, so employee one and employee two. Now I'm going to draw some stuff down, so let me just remind myself of what we're actually doing there, that's fine. Oops. 
Yeah, so we've got these six things here. And we need to be mindful of them. So let's create employee one. I'm going to do this on paint, so I do apologise, and I am using the mouse. If it becomes illegible, which it will do initially, then I'll just have to change my tact. But let's see how this brush draws. Okay. So I'm going to write employee one poorly. That's probably going to take me longer than it would be to type it out, so I think we'll change tact. I don't want to do that because I'm making some slides, you see. I don't want to do that, but there you go. New slides. That. Right, so let's make a first fragment based on employee for those two things. So first, um, first one is going to be called employee one. I'm just going to make that small. Employee one. Next, we have employee. Two. Right, okay, so that's going to be our two fragments, uh, vertically fragmented for either department, and it makes perfect sense to be able to deal with that here, so let's, uh, let's see what we can do with that, okay. Sorry. Okay, so we've got employee one fragment, employee two fragment, vertical fragmentation. Now we have to think about well, what we've got to do for our vertical uh, fragmentation in general. So the, the first thing we have to do is a projection. So a projection, so you have R, produces a relation that contains a vertical subset of R, extracting the values of specified attributes and eliminating duplicates. So, evidently, we have to use for vertical fragmentation we should use a projection. Now a projection looks like so. So insert equation uh, and then we have to find this <laughs> inside the equation editor which is never easy. Uh, which is why I didn't want to do it in the first place but let's try and see if we can find our operators. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Let's see where we are. Large operators and we're looking for here. Well, work. Doesn't seem to be working, probably taking its time. Probably gonna break PowerPoint. Great. That's just brilliant, isn't it? There we go, we've got one there. Fine. Well panicking for nothing. Okay, we'll do another one there. So we're we're taking a projection. And we're gonna put in some of our things which should actually be um Okay. This should be lowered down. So I'm gonna try and ignore this bit. I'm going to come outside of it because it never really looks the same. So I'm going to write NIN, so it's National Insurance Number, my F name, I name, whatever that is, uh, address, date of birth, and department number. Is it D? No. Perfect. And that is of employee. This would normally be on one line. That's all of employee. Fantastic. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to make this small. Uh, not the whole thing, sorry. I'm going to make this small. And I'm going to try and make this a bit bigger. Hopefully we can get the whole thing going on here. Yay. It's not great, but it'll do. Fantastic. So we'll do the same thing for here. Is it 24? Yeah, 24. Right, great. Apart from this thing here, that's fine. So just ignore that. Uh, I think if I press F5, it goes away. Maybe not. Turns out F5 is not working. None of the Fs are working. Yeah, it goes away, which is fine. So I'll do that in the end, and we can all feel happy about that. Okay. So next up, we've got to put the rest of the values in. Uh... So that'll be NIN. Nothing ever seems to go to plan when you want it to go to plan, you know. So NIN, salary, tax code, and that is it. That's for employee 
So I have to try and make that big again. Oh, there we go. Employee. Right, let's have a look at that, how it should look. There you go. So that's how it should look. So that's two projections, two vertical, obviously. So a projection produces a, a relation that contains a vertical subset of, in this case, employee. And then extracting the values of specified attributes and eliminating duplicates. Okay, so we've based these two vertical fragmentations on the key of national insurance number. So now that we have that, we've got to think about our last case from week two. Uh, from tutorial 2, sorry, because this was actually given out in week 4. But uh, yeah, from tutorial 2. Now in tutorial 2 we had an issue. Now I showed you that to start with. Um, and our issue was that we set that up into these fragments here. Into these six different departments. And as you can see, in E1 we have to deal with departments. And department numbers. So we're going to have to think about that. So we've got to use some derived horizontal fragmentation to be able to solve this. Okay, so let's remind ourselves about derived horizontal fragmentation. Derived horizontal fragmentation. Accordingly given a link L, where owner L equals S and member L equals R, the derived horizontal fragmentations of R are defined as RI is equal to R, semi-join SI, where 1 is less than or equal to I, which is less than or equal to W. This is where W is the maximum number of fragments that will be defined on R, and SI is equal to... Sigma FI, which in this case is a selection on the predicate of department number. Okay? So, that's of S, where FI is the formula according to which the primary horizontal SI is defined. Fine. Now, a lot of rubbish there about, um, you know, RIs and SIs and Ws and such. So, let's just actually do this. How many sites do we have? Well, you know, it's not so difficult. We're going to take EI. Now, that not so difficult or that easy was actually for William. I know how he likes that, um, me using that term. But guess what? It's not so bad. So, we're going to take something now called employee. Uh, let's try and make that a bit bigger again. I don't know why it always goes so small after you do that once. Anyway, there you go, II. And I'm going to go write some stuff here. So it's just some nonsense there, just ignore that. I've got to do it this way, unfortunately. Um, and I'm going to do that, and then delete, and then everything's going to be great. Fantastic. So this is going to be derived horizontal fragmentation here in this case, on E1. What is the reason for that? Well, it's pretty obvious, as I mentioned. Department number is going to be the issue. Department number. Okay. So, we, well then, we're doing that to employee 1. Hold on, I'm going to write some guff over here. So, employee 1, yeah? Brilliant. And then what we want is a semi-join. Now, what do we mean by a semi-join? Well, a semi-join, what does that give us? Say we have... Well, okay, a semi-join. R semi-join F low... Um, su subscript F of S produces a relation that contains the tuples of R that participate in the join of R with, satis with S satisfying the predicate F. So we want, if you think about it, we're doing derived horizontal fragmentation on E1 because we want everything based upon the predicate of department number on employee, or on employee 1, or on, on employee in general. So. Let's, let's think about that then. So what are we talking about? So we've got employee 1 and we've got the semi-join. I'm trying to find that again in the, uh, the maths editor. That should be fun. So let's try having a look for that. Insert equation. I hate that. Oh, it's a wig thing. Anyway, let's try and find it. It won't be in basic math, I don't think. It will be in operators. And semi-join, where are you? There's yeah, full join. Where yeah, does Sammy join? Anybody see Sammy join? You can't speak to me, so I'm just talking to myself. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's not technically right. But then again, this isn't technically a database library. Uh, do we go with it? Do you understand what I mean? 
Oh, God, what am I talking about? There we go. Semi join. Okay. Right, let's get out of there. And right, department number. Debt number. Okay. And then to finish that off, we're doing that of the I, which is fine. Now, this is a subscript. This is a subscript. Oops, that's italics. Uh, and and this is from where one is less than or equal to i, which is less than which is less than or equal to six in our case. Fantastic. So that's quite straightforward. Uh, in terms of, of, of dealing with a very simple vertical fragmentation, I think you'll agree. Okay, one well, last part, if you remember from the question. I mean, you, you all must see how that works. I mean, we carry out, you know, this II here, which is actually, you know, going to be quite straightforward in general. It's, it's fine. Uh, simply because we've got to deal with department number, right? I mean, we have to deal with department number. We have to, because we've separated those up into fragments. So, as I mentioned, there's another last part to this question. And the last part to this question says, the reconstruction of global relations from fragments. So that's checking whether this is true or not, is basically what I mean by that. Okay, so, why is it always oh, small, even though I've made it big? Right. Okay, so let's reconstruct it. Reconstruction. What we need is, firstly, we need to take E11, one, one, E12, E13, E14, E15, E16, which in this case is going to be employee rather than E, which is not good because we don't have enough space. But never mind, you get the idea. Now I'm going to put them in brackets. Then lastly, what we're going to do is I'm going to write, just briefly here, I'm going to write NIN and employee 2. So you must see what basically is happening here. Basically what I'm saying is we need all of these employees, all of them, uh, based on the national insurance number, because that's what the two fragments, the uh, vertical fragments, have been split apart on. This is one vertical fragment, this is the other vertical fragment, but we're using derived horizontal fragmentation, which is why we have this here. And we need to join these together, but in terms of the horizontal fragmentation, well, we use unions. Why? Because well, it produces a relation that contains all the tuples of R or S or or both R and S duplicate tuples being eliminated. R and S must be union compatible. Now why now why would I use a join? Okay. So, the join, create, um, the natural join is an, equ an equijoin of the two relations R and S over all common attributes X. So, we need to have unions for horizontal, and for our two vertical fragments we have to have a natural join. So, the, an equijoin of two relations R and S, in our case, is going to be the whole of employee 1 and employee 2 based on national insurance number and the horizontal parts are going to be employee 1, 1, employee 1, 2, employee 1, 3, up to employee 1, 6 are going to be the unions. So I have to go and try and find those uh, symbols again which should be fun. Oh, right, insert. I'm actually going to get out of there first before I insert stuff. Click there. Insert equation. Union. Fantastic. Right, so let's just copy and paste that into place. Now, because 
some issues I'm sure with formatting but it doesn't make much difference they are Ugh, rubbish that's fine okay so next we need a join so I'm going to try and insert something else I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go to insert and then I'm going to go to equation and then, uh, where did I keep my joins my join is where it was easy to find a minute ago yes there we go which is in here fantastic now this is lowercase, uh, not lowercase, subscript these are all subscript and that should look like a subs uh, um, complete reconstruction which is fine oops, oh, sorry we're missing out too oh, dear. which is fine so that creates exactly what we had before it recreates all the distributed horizontal stuff um, and it also then joins them together based on national insurance number because that's the one common attribute fantastic so that's great so that's our solution to that except for this bit at the bottom here that's pretty weird uh, okay so that's that's good that's good okay so derived horizontal fragmentation for projects now why would I do something like that well, let's have a look at projects now it says here about projects projects are staffed by local department offices now what did we do in the in last week's tutorial well we set things up by department department 1, department 2, department 3, department 4, department 5, department 6 as I just went through a moment ago now as you can see projects are set up by department number Okay. So department number, well that's interesting. So in that case then, we should be able to carry out derived horizontal fragmentation on this. So it should be quite straightforward to think about that based on the fact that we already know um, that we need to do it because of the departments. So for projects table, you can write projects. And I'm gonna write I. The reason I'm gonna write I is because there are I possibilities. So if I make that small, okay, that's great. Now what I have is then projects. And again, similarly as we had the last time, you know, we want this left join going on, so we're going to get that. Um, insert equation. Oh. Yeah, insert equation. I would say actually it is more this symbol. It is a subgroup. I would say that's more more it. Anyway, that symbol there. And what we want is it by department number D I where one or department I. You know, depending on what you want to call it, it's department. I know in the last case I use D, but that's fine. So department I, where 1 is less than or equal to I, which is less than you know, I, which is less than or equal to 6. And that is pretty much that. Very straightforward, and it should be relatively easy to see where you would do exactly the same thing. Oops, uh, I still have to make this subscript. There we are. So that's fine. So when we talk about the symbol, what with the semi join, uh, yeah, that's the problem. You see, I was using a left join, or a, you know, a left outer join, or uh, sorry, no, I, was, I wasn't using a semi join as such, but it's a semi join I need to have here in the last example, and it produces a relation that contains the tuples of R that participate in the join of R with S satisfying the predicate F, and in this case, department number. Okay, so lastly, what is it lastly? Lastly, we need to have a look again at the tables. We need to understand the tables. And the last one I can see is, strangely, looking at all of these, this department number is pretty obvious, we've done that. And these ones here are not going to make no real difference. But definitely works on. I'll have an issue. 
national insurance number. Mm, yeah, yeah, let's go for that. So works on. So that will be based on the employee table. So we want to see who works on what project. That's what we're doing. Who works on what project. project. So again, we have to use derived horizontal fragmentation. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm literally going to copy and paste this and just... Because, believe it or not, it's the same thing. Okay. So in this case, we've got works on. I then works on. Then we've got our semi join, but in this case, we're not going to be using this as a predicate. We're going to be using the NIN, national insurance number. And what are we actually going to be looking at? Well, we're going to be looking at E or employee 1. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. 1i, where 1 is less than or equal to i, which is less than or equal to 6. So we want to find out who works on what project over each of the employee fragments, which are, because uh, they are fragmented upon the department. So that is that. That's that finally done. So just by looking at the data, that is a possible solution. Those are possible solutions. I pointed you in directions for those questions, and that's the reasoning that I have made. You know, by looking at um, national insurance numbers being the main predicate where I could select based on employee and who works on what, that's how they join together. But we know that we have fragments, we'll derive horizontal fragmentation based on the this, which is our vertical fragmentation. Yeah. Uh, vertical fragmentation, which is then set by derived horizontal fragmentation for employee 1. So, in this case, it should actually be a 1 there, but that's okay. Because as you can see, that's it, fine. Okay, so that's me made those decisions for those reasons. It's not it's not particularly that tricky. You know, you can make those decisions yourself. There could be many other solutions. There are some other solutions to this, depending on what your assumptions are. These are my assumptions. Well, these are the, my decisions based on the data. Okay, so it's not such a big deal. You don't have to worry about it too much. It's definitely not such a big deal. So, when you get a question like this, this is the sort of methods that you might want to use. But in the exam, I will be pointing you towards this, uh, towards the solutions, or towards a method rather than solutions. So you want to take what I say. So I, di I did that similarly here in this question. You know, I said I want you to do this. You know, I want you to do this based on works on, based on projects and to what to use and also vertical fragmentation all right so that's what I wanted you to do I wanted you to, to force you down that route and I will, I'll help you along that way when it comes to uh, the examination and also some build up to the examination with some help okay well that's all uh, for this um, there'll be some more coming soon <laughs>